So because of the pressure that we were having on the land from the community and also the need for the mosque, we deem it necessary to construct a mosque. And that was in 2002, 2001, 2002. Yes, 2002. So we, we decided to relocate the mosque to the extreme end of the land so that we occupy that side of the land, the extreme end of the land, so that people will not encroach into the school, the, uh, the mission land. So we had to construct the mosque out there. And that was the reason why the mosque was relocated from the original position where Uzu laid the foundation to that other extreme end of the land. So we built it out of uh, mud and cement. It was mud and cement block um, bricks that we use. So for some reason, the mission deemed it necessary because to give it more, uh, to beautify it, give, give it the kind of posture they want for it as a central mox for the Jamaat in this region. So let us put it down. The, the mission decided, the Jamaat decided to break it and rebuild it again. In fact, they, no, they, 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 no, no, they just added yeah. that they don't bring it down. They, 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 they removed the roof, the roof and added some blocks on top and they re-roof it again. So as you can see, it is much more better off than the previous mosque that we had, the previous structure that we had. So, the, of course, as I speak, the, the Jamaat has grown now. When we started that mosque, we had only one half Safa. Uh, it was half Safa. For, for us, it was difficult. But now, you can see, especially during Juma, you have the mosque, it's almost full. Yeah, it's almost full. I will not talk about the month of Ramadan. You see a lot of people coming. So when I came in 1994, the missionary, the first missionary, the missionary I met, Movi Anif, was living at uh, Mahera Road, a house very close to Anzalu Second School, opposite Anzalu Second School. So he stayed there for some time and he was transferred um, to one house very close to the school. That the house was an unfinished house. So the the, the house owner, one late Mami Fatu, and uh, the principal by then, Mr. Mohamed Idris, they negotiated and they were able to complete the house. So Movi Anif was transferred to that house. He stayed there for some time, about two years or so, before Movi Yunis came. So when he came, he also occupied the same building, the same house, for some time again, uh, for some time before Movi Kanu was transferred here. That was in 2000, that was in 1998, 1999, you know, when Movi Kanu came. So he too stayed in that house as a mission house for some time. So there and then the mission I mean, deemed it necessary to construct a mission house. So all the arrangements for the construction of this, the new, where we are spreading this occupying states, living now. All the arrangements were made by uh, Movi Kanu, late Movi Kanu, and the principal, Mr. Mohamed Idris. They met the landowners, negotiated, bought the land, and the house, the construction of the house was started. You know, they started it. Uh, so Movi Kanu, um, through the assistance of uh, Mr. Idris, the principal, they were able to partially complete the mission house. It was not completely compl it was it was not complete. The construction was was not complete and it transferred to the house. So it was in the house while completing the construction by then. So he stayed in the house for some time before it was transferred. Uh, when I became an Amadi some um, 20 years ago, I have served in various capacities. I've held several positions in the Jamaat. 
uh, here in Lungi, I was a uh, secretary of the Jamaat, the central Jamaat here. I acted in that position for several years, and due to my my devotion to Jamaat activities, a mosque a, a mosque was erected, the mission within my community. And that is the two Mosul Jamaat. We were there myself, Alaji Idris, and some other teachers were within that same environment, within that same locality. So the mission thought it wise to erect another mosque for us out there. So we formed a Jamaat in that mosque. And in that Jamaat, I rose up to the rank of president of that Jamaat, you know, of president of that Jamaat. Some time back, I was even financial secretary of the Jamaat. So apart from the local positions I held in the Jamaat, in my community here, yeah, some time back I was elected um, secretary, work for now, in the national executive. That election actually took place in the National Sura in Freetown. I served as se secretary, work for now, national executive. So, uh, as I said, I acted in that position, I served in that position for two consecutive years. So, apart from the position I served as secretary, work, work for now in the national executive, after that, I was also elected as secretary, physical health in the national executive of the Ansarula. So, I served in that capacity for several years. And up to now, I am still the secretary for physical health for the Ansar in this new executive. When I came finally from college in 1994 to serve as teacher in the school, the first missionary that I met, or the missionary that I met by then, was Movi Anif. It was transferred from Lokom Sama when the war intensified by then, the rebel war intensified by then. In fact, the place where I was living in Lokomsama, they sent a whole bomb in the house. The house was completely devastated. You know, so I met him here, he was relocated here. So we spent, we spent some time here, a year or two. From then, it was, it was transferred to Frita. So Movi Yunis was also transferred to come and work with us here as missionary by then. So Movi Yunis was here and we were praying in the school. In the school. Uh, when Movi and Yif was here, they were praying in the house. It was when Movi Yunis came that we started praying in the school. So, but he did not spend much a long much time here he left so there and then of the Fuad Kanu came he transferred him here so Mobi Fuad Kanu was the first missionary who came here when we actually built a, a hut a hut where we were praying as we are using the hut as a mosque in the school campus so after some time we we left the mosque and by then we have we have constructed a two classroom building that two classroom building in the school that was the time if i joined them so we we're all praying there before we finally uh, we started to erect the school mosque within the school premises so as i as i'm speaking this the mosque has been completed and where the Jamaat has grown and they are using the mosque now. In 1994, when I came in 1994, I met Movi Anif. He was transferred here from Lakomsama due to the, the intensity of the war. You know, when the war broke, it intensified. Lakomsama was affected. So Movi Anif was asked to move over to Lunge. So when I came, I met him here now in 1994. So he spent about two years, about two years, 
1994, 95, about 1996, Movi Eunice, he was transferred to Freetown and Movi Eunice was relocated to Lunge to serve in this Jamaat as a mission, as a regional missionary in Lunge. Movi Eunice also spent close to two years plus here, 1996 to 1998 or so. Uh, so after then he was transferred again and they brought Movi for Alcano in 1998, 1999. Because when, this, when our interviews were conducted, Movi, Movi Kanu for Alcano was here by then now. So he was here for some time. So, but after some time again, he was transferred to Makeni. After Movi Kanu, we had uh, Movi Kushi. Movi Kushi came here, he was with us from 2002-2003, when Uzu, the late Uzu died in 2000, 2003. That was the time when Movi Kushi was transferred to Lunge. He was here by then. So from Movi Kushi, he was one of the longest serving missionaries. Because it was during his reign that the Tolmoso Jamaat was formed. And the project, he kickstarts the building of the Tolmoso Mosque Jamaat. In 2005, by then, Movi Kushi had left. After Mofi Kushi, we had Mofi Gulam. Mofi Gulam did not spend much time here. Yes, due to the ill, yes, 2008-9, Mofi Gulam was with us. But you know, as I said, he did not spend much time here because of the medical condition of his son. So he went to Ghana, the transfer, he went to Ghana with the, child, with the son, with the, with the entire family, in fact, after some time. So from then, we had Mofi Nahim. Mobi Nami also spends a good number of years here. If I spent more years than Mobi Kushi, uh, 2016, where Mobi Nahim was transferred to Freetown. I think after Mobi Nahim now, after Mobi Nahim, it was you who came here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. After Mobi Nahim, we have Mobi Wasim coming to step into the shoes. On the area of uh, devotee teachers, uh, the first devotee teacher was uh, Mr. Tariq, a Pakistani devotee teacher. He was, in fact, the principal by then of the school, the first principal of the school. That was in 1980. He spent uh, about four years here in this in this school. Because when I came here as a student to come and attend in 1985, I met him. He was on leave. He went on leave. And unfortunately, he could not come back when after the leave, after the, uh, the the end of his leave, the expiration of his leave, he did not come back. But when I came back, I learned that one student, in fact, was in fact. Uh, very devoted to cooking for cooking for him by then preparing his food. And when um, um, the principal is in school, the, the, the people who go to the house, prepare the food, leave everything there and come. So when the principal leaves school in the afternoon, goes home, he, he misses food at home to go and eat. And the, that people, that student happened to be my wife. Yeah, so I met her in 1980. Five in the school, 85, 86 in the school. So from there, we had um, another devotee teacher in the person of um, Mr. Mubashir. Because the, there was there need for science teachers, and it was difficult for us to get Sierra Leoneans science teachers to come and teach in the school. So that was the offer made by the mission to get these devotee teachers to come and teach. So, but Movi Mubashir did not spend much time here. It was just just a year or so, just a year. And he was sick. He had some homesick and the like. So the mission thought it wise to send him back home. So he was sent back home. 
after which a request was made some five years ago. Some five years ago, in, in 2013. Yes, that was in 2013, uh, seven years ago, when the mission approved two teachers to come and teach in the school, two science teachers, a Pakistani and a Bangladeshi. So, but unfortunately, the Pakistani teacher could not withstand the, the environment, the climate, and the like. So, the mission deemed it necessary to send him back home. So, whilst the Bangladeshi teacher and the person of Lutfu Rama continues, and as I speak, is the one and only devotee science Pakistani teacher who is currently serving the school as a teacher in the school. Unfortunately for us, a building was erected where the project, where a building was constructed for the school, uh, quarter, staff quarter. And apparently, as I speak, is apparently living in the school in that staff quarter. Of course, as I end, it is but important for me to highlight some aspect of my life that will serve as lesson to young people. When I came around as a young graduate from college to come and teach here, to come and work in my community, my aim actually was to work at the airport, to come and work at, to go and work at the airport. But it was unfortunate. I tried my best, but I could not succeed. So I, from then, I thought it wise to go into teaching. To enter to continue with my profession because I'm trained, I'm a trained and qualified teacher. So I went to school, I sought permission um, employment for my boss by then, the former principal of the school, Mr. Mohammed Idris. So we are together, we worked together in the school for several years, over 20 years, we were together working as a team. But as I said, perseverance, you know. As a young man, you need to persevere. You don't, you don't lose hope, you know. And in addition to, to persevere, there is also need for you, for one, to be religious, to be prayerful. Prayers actually helped me a lot, especially when I joined the Jamaat, from being a Christian to a Muslim, a Ramadan Muslim, you know, I. I started praying, Start once, twice, three times, now I pray five times a day. So with these prayers, a lot of the issues I ask the Almighty God for, I usually achieve them, you know. So what is very, very important, and advisable for a young man to be prayerful, for people to be prayerful, because our hope is in Allah, you know and not in a human being. So I've been in the school as a teacher and I rose through the ranks up to the position of principal. So just by the grace of God, within the few years when I at least tried to do some participation in politics, I was fortunate to be appointed by Ichi, the president, to serve in two different capacities this time around. Two different capacities. I was longing to work at the airport as an ordinary worker. But this time around, I believe by the grace of Allah, I am now serving as head of the airport, as chairman of the board of directors, supervising the entire workforce at the airport there. The best so those who are serving as operators, those who are operating the airport. So it is the work of Allah. So one has to be perseverance, to be steadfast, to be prayerful. Then you achieve what you want out here on earth. So I want to thank the Ahmadiyya Jamal very much for transforming my very life. I, I, I was not as prayerful as I am when I was a Christian. Now I believe I talk to my creator every two, three hours, and I see exactly the miracles that God is actually doing for me. So I want to thank you very much. 
on behalf of my very self and on behalf of my family. Thank you. Salam alaikum.